A lot of apps require some kind of modal state where you can click a button and some kind of menu pops open. It's really hard to do it though in an accessible way, which is why it's great that there's now a dialogue element baked directly into HTML. However, when you're working with React, you don't have access directly to the DOM, you're working with the virtual DOM. So how can you actually interact with the DOM APIs if you don't have access to it? Well, that's what I wanna show you in this video is how you can properly set up a dialogue element to work with React. We'll even add some TypeScript in there as well. So you can drop in whatever you need inside of the modal and it'll always show in the exact kind of same state. So that way you can use the DOM API but still use React as well. Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, we're gonna get a project up and started with Vite. So I'll do npm create Vite at latest and let's just call this something like Dialog React. Now, if you haven't used Vite before, it essentially can build a whole web server and everything else you might need. Now we're gonna choose the React version and we'll use TypeScript SWC, which is a little bit faster than kind of the normal build that they have. All right, I'll CD into that and then just npm install all the dependencies. All right, let me get this open in VS Code. I'll be right back with you. So I've got Chrome open over on the right and I've got VS Code open on the left. And let's go ahead and get the dev server up and running with npm run dev. All right, so there we go. We got this now actively working. I can now click this and it will increment the count and refresh and kind of reset it. All right, so just a standard little React app. Everything is inside this SRC folder and we're gonna just make a couple of quick changes, but I wanted you to kind of start from fresh just to see how I'm setting this up. But let's go ahead and grab all this right here and just get rid of this. And then here for this, let's just change this to say something like, let's create some dialogues. All right, there we go. Now, below here, we're gonna have two buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have a div here. And let's just go ahead and have two buttons and we could have them say something like dialogue and then whatever their number happens to be. Now I'm just using Emmet, which is built into VS Code. If you're interested more in that, I'll try to remember to link a video to using Emmet with HTML or in this case, JSX. Uh, and there's also lots of stuff you can do in CSS as well. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna have two of these things just like that. So now I've got a dialogue one and a dialogue two up and ready to go. Now, just to space these out a little bit without having to do a ton of style work, let's go ahead and just add one declaration here, which is display, and we'll just set it to flex. And let's set a gap of like one rep. Okay, so there we go. We got these things set up right here. Now, when I click on them, they should be able to do things. All the rest of the styling just comes from how Vite sets this project up by default. So now it's time to actually get a dialogue here somewhere on the page. Now, like I mentioned, there actually is a dialogue element in HTML. It's actually fairly well supported. So in here, I could say just something like uh, content or whatever, and that would be the dialogue. Now, it's not going to show by default, but there is a browser API that allows you to very quickly open it or close it, depending on what your use case happens to be. So what I'm going to do is create a little function up top here. Let's call this function something like toggle dialogue. And I need access now to this dialogue element itself. Now, again, the way that React works, you don't have access to the DOM directly, you're working with a virtual DOM. Now, I've done a video on kind of refs and why you need them just very recently. We also talked about forward refs, that's kind of what the video was about, and I explained why that's the case. So if you're interested in that, I'll direct you to that video. But for now, just know that I need a reference to this actual DOM node instead of the virtual DOM. So what I'm gonna do is say ref, and we'll point this to something in a second we're gonna create called dialogue ref. Now I can name this whatever I want, but that's what I'm gonna name it up top here. So what I need to do is then have reference to a dialogue ref, and this is going to come from use ref. And let's just go ahead and assign it to null, but then we'll assign it down below, so that should be overwritten. Now, if you wanna type this, you'd need to say HTML dialogue element like this for TypeScript. And this generic basically says, hey, this is what the type of DOM node it is. If you're not using TypeScript, no worries. So I've got this, it's now connected to down here. Now with all that set up, I can actually go back to my toggle dialogue function and open that dialogue whenever the buttons are clicked. So what we need to do is grab the dialogue ref. So that's the reference to this DOM node, not the virtual DOM, but the actual DOM node of the dialogue. Then I can just check if the current exists. And maybe the best thing to do here would be just to have a little guard clause. So we could say if there is nothing current, in other words, if it doesn't exist yet, go ahead and just jump out of this. But assuming it does exist, we're down this way, now we can do a couple of things. We can say dialogue ref dot current. So the actual DOM node itself, its current state, if it has the attribute open. Now, what's gonna happen is when we use the actual DOM API to interact with this dialogue, it will add this little attribute open when it's opened and it will remove it when it's closed. So if that is the case, then all we wanna do is close it. So I'd say dialogue current, and then, like I said, there's an actual close method that comes with that. Otherwise, I'll just copy this down for the other half of this ternary, I can simply say show modal. So with this little function written, I can just come down here to both of these buttons and we'll grab both of these together and do an on-click handler where we simply toggle the dialogue anytime that they're clicked. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna click in here. It's gonna then run this function up here. 
this function is going to look if I have any kind of DOM node that has this ref on it. If it does, then it's going to check if it has this open attribute, and then it will either close it or show it depending on what is going on. So I can click this and it should open it. And there's our content right there. I can hit the escape key and it will close it down. Now we're going to add some extra things so you can close it down in other ways as well, but that's the default behavior. And you'll notice even the focus states follow along with you. So if I come over here and hit enter, it will open and look how it's actually focused on that modal as well. So you get accessibility by default. It actually announces it. Lots of really cool stuff happening and you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is access it. Now, like I mentioned, it does add the open attribute to it. So you can see right here, dialog open. And when I close it, it removes that. And again, the browser actually handles all that. All you have to do is run the method. Now, I'm assuming we would want something inside of the dialog besides just content. We actually want different things depending on kind of when the modal is being used. So let's go ahead and think through that as well. Now, right inside here, what I would want to do is have things conditionally render. And so I can do this in a couple different ways. But one of the ways I could do this would be to have some kind of state. So I could have like a dialog uh, content like this. And this could just be a state. So I could come up here and grab both count and set count here and change this to dialog content and set dialog content. Now, in this case, I don't want it to be a number. Instead, I would want it to be some kind of JSX. So for now, what I could do is again, initialize it with null, but then I could pass another generic. Again, this is TypeScript, so no worries if you're not doing this part, it's, it should work the exact same. You just don't have to do this, but I'm gonna just say it needs to be a React node. And that way I know that this should be a React node that I'm actually using. Now, what we can do is kind of change around our button handlers here, where we could have a couple different things that are passed to the dialog, depending on which button is being clicked. So again, there's lots of ways to structure this, but as a simple example, I could come over here and create a components folder and have something like uh, modal content onetsx And very simply, let's go ahead and just have this. So I'll just template this out. It's basically just JSX that says modal content one. So we know that something is different. We'll do the same thing here and have modal content two.tsx and just like this. All right, so there we go. Uh, we've got two different components that we can now conditionally render inside here. Now, again, there's a couple different ways to do this, but one thing I could do is grab both of these and just kind of re-show how this will work. So instead of having the browser run automatically or having React do that, I can toggle the dialog. But first, what I can do is update my state, right? So here I can pass set dialog content, and then I can just set it to whatever down note I want for this particular button. So we called those something like modal content one and modal content two. So I can just add it directly like that. Now, this one, I need to be modal content two. So let's go ahead and do that. And you might've seen those things pop up well, that was an auto import feature inside of VS Code. And so they should be up here somewhere. Let's get rid of this since we don't need that anymore. There we go. Those two components are right there. So both of these are being pulled in here. And depending on which one I click, I'm setting the dialog content to that and then opening it or closing it, whatever it happens to be. Then I'm rendering the state inside of the dialog itself. So now I should be able to click here and it should say modal content one, hit escape, come over here, modal content two. So that's how you might pass different content based on your use case, kind of what you've clicked on. Now, here's the cool thing, because of the way we set up this button right here, we can use this actually inside the dialog as well. So I could come in here, and in this case, I don't actually need to set the dialog content because I'm just closing it, and we're going to toggle it. And again, because I'm not doing anything else, I can actually let React handle this. So I can just pass it the function for this onclick handler, and this could say something like close. And now when I come in here and I click, it will always be there for closing it. Just like this, it can toggle it now with the mouse as well. Now, usually you also want to click out here and have it close as well. And we can do that a couple different ways, but probably the easiest is just to use, again, built-in DOM APIs. Now, if we were to inspect this, if I open this back up, you're going to notice a couple things have happened here. This entire dialog has a backdrop pseudo element. So the backdrop right here, you can see all this. Then I also have this inner content right here. Now, the way event handlers work in JavaScript is you get access to a couple different things. You get access to the target, which is the thing you actually clicked. So in this case, like let's say I clicked the button. Well, that would be the target. However, you also get access to what's called the current target, which means anywhere I click that would be triggered by an on-click handler for the dialog, for instance, will trigger the current target. So what I can do is say, hey, if I, the thing I clicked is the same as the current target, so if the e.target is the same as the current target, then go ahead and close this, which means if I click this pseudo element, this backdrop, it should close it right up. So let me show you what I mean by that. We can just come over here to the dialog and have an on-click handler here. And what we could do is grab the event. We could just say if e.current target, is the same as e.target. And I'll go ahead and wrap this in an actual if statement. And all we want to do is now toggle the dialog, right? So what it's going to do is say, if I've clicked over here, oops, it already did it. If I click over here, this is the current target and it's the thing clicked on, it's the target. So that will close it. Well, anything inside here will actually preserve the modal. 
Now notice that if I were to inspect all this, you'll notice that I actually have a div here. So if I click inside here, it shouldn't close, right? Mm -hmm. But if I look over here, I've only got a button here and then all of the rest of this is actually part of the dialogue. You can actually see that pop up right there, right? It says dialogue, here it says div, here it says button. So that means if I click here, it'll actually close it. So there are a couple of different things I can do, but for instance, I could come in here to the children, put all of this inside some kind of div. And now if I come over here and I, and I inspect here, you can see I've now got all of this inside of a div. However, if I, if I still click on this outside, you'll see I actually get, I'm clicking the dialogue itself again. So you'd have to change the CSS a little bit. You can also just prevent the propagation of the event. So when you click an event, it'll click the button. It'll actually click this, it'll click that. And so it kind of goes up the chain and you can stop that with a stop propagation method as well. So just a couple things to watch out for depending on what your use case is. But in this case, I think this is completely sufficient. We kind of get what we want. And if they click the padding, they probably wanted to click out anyhow. All right, so there we go. You can close it, you can open it. You can click over here and hit escape. All this happens by default again using the browser APIs. Now I wanna take this one step further and use forward ref because you're probably gonna to wanna to use this dialogue on multiple pages or in multiple routes, kind of depending on your use case once again. So why don't we extract this out to its own component? Now, in order to do that, I still need to get access to the actual ref, right? So that's where forward ref comes into play. So let's come over here and I'm just gonna have something called dialogue.tsx. I'm not sure why I called these modals and that dialogue, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and grab the dialogue like this. And I'm gonna just drop all of this directly in here. Now you'll notice I don't have access to the dialogue ref anymore. I also don't have access to this and I don't have access to the actual dialogue content. So we've got a couple things to do. First of all, let's worry about this dialogue content and this method right here, all right? Because those are fairly easy if you're used to working with React. This will now just simply be the children, right? So the children of the actual React component. So we should be able to get these right here. These children that are passed down are then going to be rendered down this way. Now, the same thing goes for this toggle dialogue, right? I can just pass this down as a function, toggle dialogue, and I'm gonna get that from the parent. And now I can just toggle the dialogue when I need to. Now, this ref is where the forward ref comes in handy because this is now in a separate component. I still need access to the actual DOM node itself. So I need to actually forward the ref down from the parent to the actual component itself. So what I can do is come back over this way and I can actually pass all those things. So we'll have the dialogue and that should have auto imported up top. Let's just double check. Let's see right here. Yeah, there we go. All right, now, because the children are gonna be rendered inside of here, anything I put inside of here will basically go into that child slot, the children slot. So I can just use the same thing, right? The dialogue content. And now this will be the children that is going to be passed down to the dialogue itself. I've also got this toggle dialogue as well. So we need to do that as well. Now here, this is an actual prop. So I'm gonna have this toggle dialogue be my toggle dialogue function. So that all works just fine. However, we're still waiting on this dialogue ref. Now you might think you can just pass it down as another prop, but that actually won't work. So if I come in here and have a dialogue ref like this and I'm passing it down, it still doesn't work, right? Because it's not defined. And I can come in here and try to grab the ref itself and rename it here, but it still won't work properly. In fact, I'm getting an error right over here. And when I clicked it, it didn't work. You see ref is not a prop. So this is where forward ref comes in handy. What we're gonna do is take the ref from the parent and send it down to the child. Now, what I need to do is actually wrap this entire thing here and parentheses, and we're going to basically pass this whole thing to something called forward ref. This comes from React, you can see it right here. Now I can pass it two things right here. I've got, first of all, the object that will have all my props, that's what I've already got. And then secondly, just outside of this, I will pass in the actual ref. Now in this particular use case, I'm using TypeScript, so I also need to give it a little bit more information. I can do that once again with a generic, where I first of all pass the kind of HTML element it is, which is an HTML dialogue element. And then secondly, I can pass it whatever props I passed in. So we're gonna go ahead and create a type up here, type of props. And here, this will have the two things right here, the children and the toggle dialogue. So the children will simply be react.react .react node. And then toggle dialogue is a function. And this is just gonna basically be a function that returns void. If you're not sure kind of how to type this right here, you can always come back this way and kind of figure out how, what it is right here. And you can see that's exactly what it is. So that's all I'm gonna do is pass that along down this way. Now, if we did all that right, we should now have access to it and it works just the same, right? You can close this down, open this one up and all of this works as kind of a separate component now. So let's talk through that really briefly and we'll call this video done. But I hope this has been a help to kind of walk through how to do it, why you want to do it this way and the power that's available in these DOM APIs. So right over this way, what we've got is two different buttons that might interact with this dialogue in different ways. And I've imported this dialogue that we might use on multiple pages. Maybe you'd have this just always on the route and that way you always have access to it whenever you need it. 
Now, whenever you toggle the dialog, you might wanna first set the dialog content, which in this case, I just have as a React node. So I can fill that dialog with whatever I need. And I'll always have the close button below it because that's how I've set up the dialog. Now, in order to extract this out into its own component, we had to pass down a few props, right? We had to pass down the actual toggle dialog function that opens and closes it. And then we also had to have some kind of ref. This ref is defined in the parent scope right up here. And then we can actually receive it down in the ch child scope and wrap this whole thing in a forward ref. That way we get access to the actual DOM node itself, but we get access to it in the parent. That means whenever a button is clicked that should open this, it can actually access the dialog ref itself, grab that and show or hide it depending on what the current state is. All the children are then dumped right inside here. And again, we've got this button right over here. We even set up this nice click so that we can click off and it will always work. And of course you always have the default escape key and uh, all the focus states that are available in this native HTML element. Hey, well, I hope that was a big help. If you're interested more in using forward ref in particular, I'll make sure to link a video below that shows you more about how to work with forward ref and kind of why you might need it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.